another episode of Shuffle Melbourne. I'm Catherine Powell. And I'm Marie Kelly. And we're here in the middle of Federation Square, ready to talk all things Melbourne music. Absolutely, because the heart and soul of the Australian music industry is here in Melbourne, that's for sure. Absolutely. Speaking of heart and soul, you know who's got it? Kylie Oldest. Mm -hmm. You may know her as the singer of the Bamboos or Cooking on Three Burners. Absolutely. And a friend of the show, McLean Jackson, was lucky enough to have a chat today. And we are so excited to have a look at that interview. You can check it out right here. Hello friends, I am McLean Jackson and I'm joined here by Kylie Aldist. Kylie, how are you today? Good, thank you McLean, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. It's great to have you in the studio today, it's so good to have you. Um, tell us a little bit about um, yourself and just the, your career and um, its beginnings. Oh goodness, okay, that's going to be a long story. <laughs> a little bit, okay, so uh, I just, I've always been able to sing. I always sang with my family when I was a little girl and I, uh, we'll just fast forward like 20 years and I, I moved to Melbourne and um, moved into Fitzroy and joined every band in the world and then started singing and um, yeah I haven't stopped, I haven't looked back, I've just I've been part of the Melbourne music scene for probably nearly 25, nearly maybe 30 years now so it's a, it's an, and hopefully it's a, it's a never ending story, <laughs> mm. yeah it's a long story and hopefully it'll continue. Oh, hopefully, definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you've worked with some big names. I mean, the um, the Bamboos, Cooking on Three Jimmy Burners, Burners yes. Jimmy Barnes. Uh, who has been your favourite to work with, do you think? Uh, well, definitely, I'd say touring with the Bamboos has been, that was that was a big thing in my life. Uh, we went to England. I'd never been to England before. We went to just about every country in Europe, like probably did 29 gigs in 30 days or something like that. It was very strange. Also with Cook It On Three Burners, we did the same sort of thing. And it's the link to those two bands was Lance Ferguson. So we both worked together. We're like very close oh, and okay. good friends and worked together for a long time in that way. And it was just such an experience for me to go to Europe and uh, see the world and be in a band. And as my brother said, you know, at the end of the night, the place you want to be is the band because that's the fun place to be and everyone wants to talk to you at the end of the night. And, you know, like touring overseas can be interesting, but if you don't know anybody and if, or if you're just on your own or if you're just with one other person, you know, it can be kind of boring or, you know, like if somebody wants to go to bed and you want to go out or this, that and the other, but if you've got like eight or nine people to play with, the bamboos are really good fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I got to do that. And I imagine that kind of that band atmosphere must have been great to to kind of grow up in and also develop as an artist as well. Oh, amazing. Well, apart from the fact that they're all amazing musicians and um, I can't play an instrument or even read music. <laughs> so they're all very, very, uh, like, uh, very skilled and then um, jazz musicians, they're perfectionists and they taught me a lot and um, just to be able to be, you know, able to play with them and sing with them and, you know, just be in that same level has been such a treat for me and such a privilege, really. Oh, excellent. Mm. And your last album, of course, was Family Tree. What have you been doing since then? Well, I guess we, we looked at that the other day and how, how long has it been? It's almost three years, I think, since I wrote that. Is that true? That's a bit silly, isn't it? Well, what I've been doing is actually writing new music. Um, and we've just about, we're actually just about to put out a new song called Body. We've played it a few times at some gigs and we've just written uh, a friend of mine, Warren Hunter, who's uh, my, in my band now. He's, um, because with Family Tree, Lance Ferguson and Graham Pogson wrote that with me. And it was a different format in that it was more electro boogie and it was written with, you know, different instruments than, say, my first three or four albums that are written basically with just, um, you know, all the normal band instruments. So this was written on electro stuff. So now I'm thinking, OK, so how do I play this? So what I've been doing since then is I've been touring that album around Australia um, with Woz and Warren Hunter, who plays um, Ableton for me, and synthesizers, Luke Saunders, who writes all that stuff. We've been writing new songs in that format. And um, so at the same time, just as that album came out, the Kungs thing hit, um, the Cooking on Three Burners remix that was remixed by Kungs. And that made me go to England and um, to sing in nightclubs over there and do lots of weird stuff. Yeah. yeah, flew to England for one night at one stage, just yeah to sing to thousands of kids in nightclubs who all wanted to hear the song three or four times in a row, like little kids listening oh, wow. to a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been very interesting. So yeah, just about to put out a new song called Body, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, excited about that. We're launching it at the Corner Hotel, and um, yeah, it's it's nice to be doing uh, new music that. Uh, I just feel that it's the sort of music that I listened to when I was maybe 16 or 17 that I mm -hmm. loved and um, it feels to me like all that 80s music is coming back anyway, 80s, 90s dance stuff. 
um, it seems to be making a comeback and I'm lucky because I love it and that's what I'm writing. Yeah, mm. and do you find yourself having uh, a process, um, like a writing process when, you, when you're starting to come up with songs? Well, mostly, um, as I said, I can't read or write, so I, it comes from basically friends like Lance Ferguson, who's always produced my stuff, um, other band members uh, giving me some chords or some music and then laying that down for me, and then I'll hear it and I'll hear what I want to sing over top of it. Mm. And then basically you just hear a melody. Melody comes first for me, so I'll hear the music, then I'll feel hear a melody, and then I'll think of some words, and that, yeah, that it sort of comes from, it's, I think it's, yeah, magic a bit. <laughs> When did you first realise that you had achieved this kind of degree of success in your career? Well, I don't know that I have achieved amazing success realistically because, you know, I mean, for me, success is playing original music and um, enjoying it and being able to sort of, you know, go out in the world and still be relevant even though you're not doing um, someone else's music and I feel that I'm fulfilling myself and, you know, getting to play with amazing musicians and touring and people still want to listen to me so I think yeah that's success for me. Oh. And what do you think the future holds for you? Well I don't have a slight clue. <laughs> no <laughs> I don't know. Um, well we all, we're always trying to write new music. We're always thinking, every, all, music, all musicians are always thinking about the next thing, the next thing. It, it's never enough that you know you've done something and it's like, it's like the bank has to make you know, mm. <laughs> a record profit every year but uh, music is not about money, it's my life and I can't stop doing it, so I just would like to continue that. Um, but yes, I mean, I'm, I'm a, a mother and a wife and I love my life. I have a great, you know, I have a great, a lot of fr friends and family and um, I think I just, I would just like to keep enjoying music if I can. Well, that sounds like a plan, doesn't it? I think it is. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, uh, Kylie, for coming on the show today. It was great to hear your story. Thank you so My much. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for talking to me. Welcome back. We've got some really talented guests on this show, don't we? We do. My gosh, I'm so excited for what's coming up next. We've got Nick Barker. Yes, that's right, from Heartache State. Yes. Yes. We interviewed him at f his store, Fretted Instruments. Yeah, because he's, not only is he, a, you know, a singer, and uh, he also has his own music shop as well. So that's pretty cool. Very, very talented man. You can check out his performance and the interview right mm -hmm. here. What made you decide to start a new band, I guess? Well, Justin and I have been playing together for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I was just getting a bit sick of being me, <laughs> if that makes sense. I was just, like I was doing a lot of solo shows. I was, you know, I was playing songs that are, were probably 10 or 15 years old and release a new album and then kind of, you know, I was always sort of coming back to doing that. I just got really sick of it and just wanted to kind of do something new. So I just, Justin and I just, we kind of started writing a bunch of songs and that was sort of going to be for a solo album, like a Nick Barker solo album and it just, it just felt really good, so I just decided to kind of make it into a band. We'd always had this kind of idea of having this band. It just sort of seemed like the time was right. So we did that first album, and then we put that out, and we got another got another a little deal out of a label in Sydney called Golden Robot Records, and and just went on from there and did this second album. So it's just it's just fun, you know. It's just it's it's good being in a guitar band again, you know. I mean. Don't let the folkiness of this for you. It's actually a kind of proper rock and roll band with, you know, drums and everything. So, <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, I mean, it, it just, it's important to kind of keep engaged in music when you've been doing it for as long as I have and for as long as Justin has. It's just, you can't kind of, you can't, you can't sort of, just bluff your way through it, you know, if you're not into it, it really shows and like, and I just wasn't, I was really kind of just going, oh man, I'm gonna play this song again, you know, this song's kind of 10, 15 years old and now it's like I, I really look forward to playing, you know, I, I look forward to getting up there and, and just shutting my eyes and going for it, you know, and, and that's kind of why I got into music in the first place and that's why everybody does and, you know, if you're in it for a long time, it can, you can lose sight of that, so. That was sort of the reason behind it, you know, just to sort of drop everything and get a cl clean canvas, you know. Yeah. Um, so your uh, latest album is um, Lost 
Blast of the Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was the writing, writing process for that like for you? Uh, it was easy because I had because I had Justin to do it with, you know. So it was um, it wasn't me just sort of sitting there, kind of torturing myself on my own, and 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 also because it was just the way the band was. It was it was the sum of its parts, and we didn't have to. It wasn't like as a solo artist you can go, oh gee whiz, I might get a bit of, you know, ukulele on this. So you ring up the guy, you know, who plays ukulele or you, and it becomes this really infinite thing where you, you, you can take music in any direction. It can be a little bit kind of daunting. With, with our band, there's four people. When every one of those four people has kind of contributed, that's it. So it's really liberating, it's really easy. And we, we didn't rehearse to do it. We just went in and with the song ideas and we kind of worked them up on the day and recorded them. So it was, it was, it was a real freedom in it. It's a real 70s approach to recording. You know, if you've read any of those kind of books, like bands would go into the studio and jam stuff up and then just kind of bang them down without, with sort of reckless abandon. So for us, that was, was, was perfect. It was, it was just a lot of fun and it, there was no pressure. So it was perfect for me because I really don't like recording, you know. I, it stresses me out, so it was good. Um, so where does inspiration come from for you when you're writing music? It's kind of corny, but it, it, it isn't something you can just switch on and off. And I, like, I don't sit down and try, and try and write songs anymore. I used to, and you always, it, you'll come up with stuff, but it's never any good. Always the best things, always the ones that sort of just write you. And lots of songwriters say that, and as a, it does sound cheesy, but it's true. You'll just, you'll just sort of, you know, pick your guitar up, and something will come out, and it'll just stick. And it's generally pretty quick. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty disorganised with it. I've tried to be organised and have a notebook and all that kind of thing, but generally I'm still writing lyrics as as the vocals are going down. You know, so it's the inspiration comes, but it's. It's a messy kind of inspiration with me. It's not a. It's not. It's not some sort of dark art process. It's just as simple as having an idea and recording it onto my phone and then forgetting about it and coming back to it. So, but it works. You know, I've written a lot of songs and I've all written them all in the same way. So, I must be doing something right. And, hey, Tom Petty did it that way, so it can't be all bad. Um. So obviously, you've had you know a lot of experience you did a lot of writing in the past um, and so like does this uh, did your past music influence what you do and what you write now well I've always been into always been into guitar music 70s guitar music rock and roll stuff that guys play you know that's always been my inspiration so and that was pretty much what I've done ever since I got into music it was always in one form or another some of it was a bit artier than others, but for the most part, it was it came down to playing live with people and that chemistry. And so, with our band, it's just continued on for that. As I said, I did a lot of solo stuff, you know, playing acoustic guitar and sort of that was great. It's a good money spinner, and it was also a good way to get around the world and, and play shows. Like I did that all throughout Europe and. But it just gets to the point where you kind of you just don't have anything more to say. Well, I don't don't have anything more to say on in, in this kind of format anymore. So I wanted to get in that band and have it that primal thing again. So it's just something you keep coming back to. I guess it's what I listened to when I was a kid. You know, seventies guitar based music. So same as Justin. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Um, do you think that you'll ever? <laughs> if you had asked me that about two and a half hours ago, I would have said, yes, definitely. Oh, you can't. I mean, you, in order to quit music, you would have to not ever pick up a guitar again, and I don't think that's going to happen. I have plenty of time. It's frustrating. Believe me, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. It's competitive. It's heartbreaking. It's uplifting. It's all of those things because you're so connected to it, and anybody who says... You don't get affected by it. You can't do something that you're so hardwired into and that's so much part of you. And if, it, if you don't get on that festival, if, you, if someone says something really nasty about your record or if people don't go to your gig, all those sorts of things really stab you in the heart. 
They really, really do. And of course you get thick skinned and, and there's all sorts of reasons you can say, well, oh, well, didn't that, you know, doesn't matter. That didn't happen for this reason or that reason, but it's still, it's, but it's, you know, my musical career has been like this the whole time. You know, something, it'll go flat and then something good will happen and then it'll be like, wow, it's great. So it's, it's an odd way to live your life, even on the level that we're talking about. I can't imagine what it would be like for somebody who sells millions and millions of records and, you know, they think that they're having a bad day when they've sold only 200,000, whereas we'd love to sell 200,000. So it's, it's all relative, but I don't, you know, plenty of times I think I'd like to stop the kind of chasing this, weird goal that we all have but I don't think I'll ever quit altogether about you nah. not unless the you business really <laughs> takes off <laughs> no. yeah. um, so you're going to do a performance yes today, yep. and what will you play uh, we're going to play some of Justin's called Barrel so we always open the set with this one so it's a good one so
Okay, that was pretty cool, right? I learned so much from all these interviews. What I a know. talented community we have. Does it mean that we're ready to release our own music now? Ooh, I think we might be. Yeah. But I think we might have to wrap up the show. I think we will. But before we do, a bit of housekeeping. We are on all the social medias. So if you want to see what we get up to behind the scenes, check out YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and what's that special thing we've got? Um, we've got a very special hashtag, Shuffle Melbourne. Hashtag Shuffle, M-E-L-B is That's the one right, to look. because you're not Australian unless everything is abbreviated. Mm-hmm. But hey, before we finish up, we have two very exciting performances by Sarah McLeod. <gasps> you got to watch Sarah McLeod perform. I did. How dare you? I know. I'm ve- so it was lucky. Very exciting. You may recognise her from the Super Jesus, who you know won a couple of Aries, no biggie. Just a couple. Just a couple. You know, we all do. Um, yeah, and she has a very successful solo career as well, and so she's going to perform for us a couple of her new songs off her new EP. So let's check that out. But until next time, I'm Marie Kelly. And I'm Catherine Powell. Hey guys, Catherine from Shuffle Melbourne here and I'm so lucky to be at the gorgeous Suki Lounge today with Sarah McLeod. Now you may recognise Sarah from a little band called The Super Jesus and she is also an incredible solo artist. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Catherine. The album is out. How have you found it being received? Are you happy with how it was received? It was received really warmly and Mm. I'm, I'm so pleased because I stopped three times at the gate before. Yeah. And so I was really nervous about putting it out and I need to overcome that fear and I feel like I have. I think the main thing is to be, um, to make sure that you are doing, in your heart of hearts, that you are doing the best creative work that you are able to do at that point in your life. And you always get better as you go along, mm. but um, if you feel like when you're writing something, like look at every line and think, is that the best line I can put in there? Because lyrics, um, in a song, like they're sort of expensive real estate, so you can only say so much, it's not like a novel. Mm. So you don't have long to get your point across. So you've got to be particular and concise, and if you feel like you're waffling just for the sake of rhyming, you've got to stop yourself. And I think that's, I feel like that's really important.
Hey, it's your night. Go on and love me with all of your mind. You'll be my world. I'll be your swine. We'll be forever. Bad Valentine. We'll be forever. Valentine